One of the things that just drives me crazy is when people say, you've got this problem and there's just no way to fix it. Just like high pH soils. Come on, we can fix high pH soils. I'm not gonna say it's simple or easy, but we can absolutely get it done. It's the same thing if you've got high salt or sodic soils. I'm telling you right now, you absolutely can fix those soils. Well, you can't just sit on your laurels and say, all right, the problem's just gonna go away. It's not going away. It didn't get there overnight. It's probably not gonna go away overnight either. It's taken a long time to build those salt levels up like they have. Uh, but we can also take them away if we start making the right decisions now. So let's look at some steps you can take to eliminate sodium and salts in your fields. Well, the number one thing is, the reason why you got into this mess, chances are, is you've got a drainage problem. So we gotta fix the drainage problem. Now let's say it's rented ground. What are you gonna do on rented ground? That's what a lot of people say, well, there's nothing I can do. Yeah, there is. Go to the landlord and say, look, your ground has high salt, high sodium. We've got a major problem here, so I can't get much yield, meaning I can't pay you much for rent. How about if we fix the problem and I'll pay you a lot more for rent? I'll tell you what, you're gonna get the landlord interested real fast. The other thing is, if people know this is ground that has high salt or it's got a sodic issue, are they really gonna be willing to pay much on a land auction? No, they're not. So if you fix the problem in conjunction with the landlord, this is a good thing for everybody long-term, you and the landlord. But tile is absolutely the way to go. And if you've got real heavy ground, that's usually where we see these problems. Let's say your cation exchange capacity is 15, 18, 20, 25, even 50 foot tile centers may not be enough. You may have to have down to 30 or 40 foot tile spacings to totally fix this problem. But the answer is good drainage. The answer is get some tile out in that ground. When you get super excessive levels of sodium in soil, that soil just gets tight. You don't get water to move down and percolate through the soil. And you know, it's hard to flush those salts and that sodium out unless you get that drainage solved. So that is really the first step. And if you can't do that, boy, it's going to be really tough to make headways in a hurry on these salt and sodium issues. Okay, once you've addressed this tile issue, then I would take a real hard look at your soil test. If you've got lower calcium, I'm talking below 65%, you got to get some calcium out there. And there are a couple different ways you can do it. If you're real low, let's say you're below 50 or below 55% calcium, I'd put some lime out there. Even if you say, well, my pH is already relatively high, who cares? You're not going to hurt it. All right, what we're trying to do here is get a bunch of calcium there, then you get more pore space there, then you get more movement of water, and that pH will start to go down. So I know it seems counterintuitive to throw lime out because everybody says, oh, lime will increase your pH. Yeah, lime does increase your pH if it's low, but if it's high, lime may actually lower your pH. So I'd get the calcium levels up. The other thing that you can do is use gypsum. So once you get that calcium percentage up to at least 60 or 65%, then I'd start using some gypsum. What that gypsum is going to do is give you two things. It gives you more calcium so you get more pore space in your soil. You're going to get better movement of water, salts, sodium, everything is going through down through your soil, that's great. But the other side is, we've got the sulfate component. And the sulfate combined with the sodium is gonna form sodium sulfate, which is a salt that's leachable. So that's what we wanna do, is try to leach that sodium eventually out of your soil. Well, the other thing that you have to look at, if you're working with irrigated ground, is take a look at that water quality. Yep. Perhaps you're adding to your problem by putting on poor quality water. I've talked to a lot of guys over the years that said, Wow, we had to go deeper down to get into some better water because the water we were pumping out was adding more sodium. Every day that pivot was running across our ground, we were making our problems worse. So you would think, well, I've got irrigated ground. Every time that pivot goes around, it should be great. But in many cases, it's not. So make sure you're looking at your water quality on a regular basis. There are things you can do to treat water, but you're probably gonna be best off looking deeper for a better quality of water to start with. In the short term, what a lot of people have done with high salt and sodic soils is they've just gone out and taken bales of straw and gotten that worked down into the soil to try to improve organic matter, improve infiltration. You can certainly try that if you want, but I would rather see you tile, get some lime and gypsum out there and change things that way. The other step is picking the right varieties or maybe even the right crop. Barley, for example, is pretty salt tolerant compared to a lot of other crops like soybeans. So pick the right crop, pick the right varieties, and you can survive in the short term, but hopefully if you make these soil changes, then in the long term you can reclaim your lost soil. Well, if high sodium levels or high salt levels are your problem and some of your ground, don't lose hope. 
There is a fix to it. You just have to get after it, improve the drainage, and then start doing things to help move that salt out of your soil. Another thing that's really important if you want top yields on your farm is controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop it on your farm coming up later in the show.